What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, February 9th, 2021, a Widow Wednesday. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the Rogue One at Gary Widow. Glad to be back with you for another Widow Wednesday on a Tuesday, Greg. I need the update, Gary. I've seen you just besmirched on the internet. It, of course, Valentine's Day upon us. Remember, everybody, it is this weekend. You have time still yeah. to make sure you get a card, get some flowers, yeah. get it for yeah. your mom, whatever. Uh, and what I've seen, of course, is that, you know, you're one third of the X cast. It's you, Snowbike Mike, Paris Lily out there. And what happened? Snowbike Mike and Paris Lily got a little Valentine's Day package from Xbox with a nice red Xbox controller, some Be Mine hearts and stuff. You got Diddly Squat. What happened? Not just, let's make, make this point, Greg, not just your <laughs> co-host, fa- founder, founder, founder yeah, of the yeah. Xbox. Mm-hmm. If it weren't for me saying to you on, on, the, on the air but way back when, why is there no Xbox podcast? There would be no Xbox podcast. So, you know, I mean, we had, most, we let's, had let's, it behind let's, the scenes been thinking about it. Give me, a, yeah, yeah. give me a little bit. Of, just give me sure. a little bit. Of, but I sure. was the progenitor. I planted that You did seed. kick us in the ass live in the air. It may have in your brain, but I planted the seed. Here's what I'll always say is that no matter what, there was probably one day going to be an Xbox podcast for Kind of Funny. If you hadn't been, you know, Gary Wood on the air about it, Gary Wood would probably wouldn't have been on it. That's exactly right. Yep. 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 So I'm just saying, credit where it's due. Now, um, oh yeah, go ahead. Now, with the val- listen, getting rejected on or around Valentine's Day is nothing new to me, Greg. That's been the story of my life. So you know, I, I, I take that, take that in stride. But I was, um, well, they see the whole point was I just want to make sure, I just want to make clear how much I don't care. In fact, I tweeted about how much I don't care. I did not care at all. I was not at all bothered. Hey, hold Microsoft. on one second, too. I, uh, you're not yeah. at all bothered, which is a complete lie. Kevin, we're also not live on Twitch. Are you aware of this? Did you see oh some, some Twitch setup still for uh, what it was over on uh, What's His Face YouTube for in review? A great hey, interview you know, maybe available right now. I just, I just realized I'm wearing my sweatshirt, my hoodie mm. inside out. Well, well, for the sorry. record, don't don't start do you dropping me, your racial slurs. You we're still re- going to, the show's sorry. just going to pick up. Yeah, yeah. The show's just going to pick up live. It's sorry, not going to help. one of those times I hit the button. Okay, so we're not doing a redo. No, no. Everybody's everybody's watching this on YouTube. They had no idea what was going on. They're going to jump right back into the story, but I just caught the live kids. chat you told the youtube kids you know told the youtube kids why well, I mean, only yeah, the they youtube know, kids but like, get this premium content yeah exactly it's like a pre-show and a post show hey everybody there was just a little if you're one of the twitch people uh, we were live for like three seconds what you missed is that gary's sweatshirt is inside out and he's starting to rant about how he didn't get a valentine's day xbox controller continue gary no that's i'm not ranting. That, that's you're missing the point greg the he's point so is angry, how, how little i care about the fact that Microsoft in there you is care so wisdom. little you tweet about so it. Li- Sometimes you have to tell people how much you don't care. Gary, to really Gary, make huh? Right. Gary, yes, Would Kevin. you like? Would you like my Valentine's Day controller? Yeah. Do you know do they you sent have Kevin? One? They sent Kevin the box too with that. I, yeah, I, I don't care who else they send it to. If Kevin gets a nice thing, I, I personally delivered a cake to Kevin's house it's this the weekend. Best. So it's the that, best. So I do like Kevin to have nice and things. Gary, that's, that's, that's why I can't keep the lie going. Like, that's, they didn't send me a anything, Gary. Cake that my wife lovingly baked. Greg made me I tell. Delivered. Greg made me tell personal, a lie. I'm sorry. Personal delivery. What? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Sorry. Real quick, uh, for the cake delivery, on this second wave of cakes, was it different people? Because obviously I was in cake, cake wave, wave one of You were in wave one. And I'm not saying I wanted another one, but I want to turn down another one. I just want to make sure, like, I, I expressed my gratitude Wasn't enough. Wasn't that enough that if, for you that you were in the first wave? Of course it was, but I'm just letting. You, I'm just saying, saying you wanted to be on. You be on. You want to be on an every cake wave. I'm just saying when we get to Greg, the second rotation, uh, when we get to the rotation where we're starting to put mix back in regulars, I'd like to be a regular. That's Gary, all. If Gary, we, if, we, if, 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 we, if, if we're we taking all a, the way around, then yeah, mm-hmm. and we come back to where we started, then yeah. But Fair I enough. That's all. Take care of everyone else. I Gary, take care of first, Greg. Literally, I appreciate it. Gary, I would oh like God. to add to be. Uh, I would like to advocate to be on every rotation, and I will leverage the fact that I now have a fifty-five pound turtle that your daughter can come and see. It's it's open. Like she I'm can sure just go she, up I'm the sure stairs, she would love them. Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? That'd be. She'd be like, "Oh, let's go visit the turtle man with the, with the cake." Let the cake wars begin. Well, so far, um, I have to get. So we we will get cakes to everyone. Uh, at kind of funny. Um, my wife's been baking a lot of cakes, so many cakes that we don't know what to do with them all. So we've just been kind of giving them away to friends. You've got one, Kevin and Paula got one, Joey got one, uh, the Gettys family got one. Uh, and obviously there are, we still have to take care of, you know, Barrett and Nick and Andy and cool Greg and, and, um, and blessing and, um, uh, you know, the rest of the kind on. of funny yeah. family. We'll, we'll, we'll get, to, we'll get to and Roger, I guess now and Snowbike. everyone. We have we're to mail to, those though. We got it. Yeah. Hard. That's, yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, I don't think um, so. uh, 
you've, oh, you've, 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 I've lost. Oh, red controllers. Yes. Okay. So you don't care. I, yeah, we know. We I, know. I don't <laughs> care if you get one. I don't care if someone else gets one. It just struck me as odd. While not caring at all, it just struck me as odd that my two co-hosts of the kind of funny X cast, who I love by the mm -hmm. way, Snowbike Mike and Paris Lily, both got the Valentine's Day love package with a red Series X controller uh, from Microsoft, and I didn't. Um, and I was so unperturbed by this that I did tweet about it to make sure that everyone understood just how unbothered uh, I was and how much it wasn't getting to me. Uh, and the good news is I subsequently got a very nice uh, message from Microsoft explaining that some of the uh, shipments were delayed. Uh, and mm, I will sure, and I will, sure, sure. Yeah, you're that's the thing. Like, your yeah, invitation yeah, was, was it, lost in the mail. Were they delayed, of course. Or are they just now covering their asses? I don't know. The point is, Gary's gonna. I'm gonna get mine. That's all that really matters at the end. I think. But you don't care. Not carry, I'll continue to. Not you don't carry care. Away. You just it's went through all this it's, trouble it's, to get. It. I got it. I understand. It's not about me. It's never about me, Greg. It's never it's about, about you. It's about the greater good. It's about the family. You what? You watched the Fast and Furious movies. You know it's really about. Sure. Sure. Yeah. And I remember it's I don't know when you were getting written up all over about uh, animal talking when you were in all the varieties and the deadlines yeah. and you were getting about all these interviews you were just mentioning kind of funny left and right in those pieces weren't you Yeah and not only no well uh, excuse me how many guests did I have on from kind of funny you were on Joey was on. I invited Kevin. He turned me down. I snow like Mike. <laughs> I don't know. He's he's fact, I was <laughs> don't tell me there's don't tell me there's no kind of funny connection. Whenever, whenever an opportunity comes my way, Greg, whether it's self-generated or from the outside, the very first question I ask myself is, how can I use this to help my friends? You're, I think you know that. You're selfless, is what I like to think. You know, very, I mean? very selfless. It's like it's like I in my own imagination, I don't even really exist except as a catalyst, as a vessel, to make other people happy. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm only here to make you happy. It's certainly because of what you're fucking paying me. I'm here to make you happy, Greg. I'm here to help my friends. Right, I think you get a lot of free games. Possible. All right, I get you a lot of free games. I do get some free games. All right, don't worry I think, about I think, that. I think the free games are actually worth more than the cash that you pay me. And then, of course, the real treasure and payment is the friendships we make along the way. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have a banger of a show that we shouldn't have wasted this much time goofing around, but that's what we do. Let's talk about if Anthem <laughs> is going to survive the week. CD Projekt Red has been hacked, and Crash Bandicoot is coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox I'm Series you, X and S. Greg, I'm loving these Move to Tuesdays. Real news stories to get my teeth into. Yeah, I, well, for the record, remember, yeah, we moved you from Wednesday to Tuesday because it was better for my schedule, and we were like, "That's mm -hmm. great." Then we saw once Blessing again, Star once again, selflessly sacrificing my schedule to make your life more. But convenient. just think about it; it's been it's a great thing of like watching, you know, 2020 uh, Blessing Addy Oye Jr. couldn't lose. 2021, we moved him to Wednesday. He was me like, "Oh man, there's not that much news," and then his co-host quit. We fucked this kid's career up, and I'm very oh, excited about it. But let's get to our kind of funny games daily because kind of funny games daily each and every week day on a variety of platforms we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about if you like that be part of the show at patreon.com slash kind of funny games you can give us your questions your comments your concerns your squad up requests and so much more of course on patreon.com slash kind of funny games you can get the show ad free you can get it with the exclusive post show we do each and every weekday and you can just take care of us like so many of our patreon producers i'll talk about it in a second but if you have no bucks to toss our way i'm sorry if you have no smackers to toss our way it's no big deal you can watch live as we record the show on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games just like joshy g 731 outright on 6017 and my dog nick 96 r thank you for your support if you're on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games right now you have a special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe each and every weekday housekeeping for you i swear ladies and gentlemen i try to keep it short but it's too big of a week it kind of funny so strap in right now ps i love you xoxo is live it is all about bloodborne and it features ign's brian altano game spots tamor hussein andy cortez from twitch.tv slash andy cortez blessing and myself as we talk about bloodborne in one giant spoiler review thing for two hours then roger perconi has filed a first impressions for little nightmares 2 on youtube.com slash kind of funny games he loves it he asks is it a game of the year contender you can only find out by going and checking out that first impressions on youtube.com slash kind of funny games goes to port the kitties talking about a game he cares about then beyond all of that it is a gigantic week at kind of funny 
tomorrow, Wednesday, February 10th at 2.30 p.m., Assassin's Creed in review, a kind of funny games in review special releases. This is, of course, Barrett's two-hour, <laughs> two-hour in review as he goes through every Assassin's Creed because he played every Assassin's Creed last year to get this. It will be a YouTube uh, premiere at 2.30 tomorrow, Pacific time, youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Of course, it'll be up after that. Please go support that. Please go watch it. Barrett has put so much TLC into it, and it's amazing. Then, if that wasn't enough, when that ends, you can go to twitch.tv slash kind of funny games on Wednesday. The FCF activities are beginning. It's the first draft for our football team, uh, the Wild Aces. Uh, Snowbike Mike and myself and probably a bunch of other people will show up and clown around at Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Then, Saturday, it's Wild Aces game day. That is right. The fan control football season starts. Uh, Wild Aces against Quavo and Richard Sherman's Glacier Boys. We'll be streaming the game 5 p.m. Saturday twitch.tv slash kind of funny games of course go to fcf.io uh register so as a wild aces fan you can call the plays you can draft the team with us on wednesday too of course it's all fan controlled football but i digress there's a bunch of information in there uh blessing junior in the ch- oh you blessing you son of a bitch i looked over the chat and i saw somebody say go Bl- glacier boys and it's blessing and so i was gonna go uh time them out but then i got yelled at by joey that i can't time people out because the joke doesn't work or maybe it was andy that yelled at me but it I, screws no, up everybody's I, yeah, permissions. I, but like I don't think blessing matters. Like, I don't think he's got real permissions to, you know. I mean, what does he do around here? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I've never seen him do something any important than the Twitch chat. Then after the game on Saturday night, remember, FCF games are just an hour long. You can catch Love, Sex, and Stuff's lo- Love, Sex, and Stuff's live Valentine's Day call-in show. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. So much content happening here. Please support all of it, even though you already do. Like our Patreon producers, Graham of Legend, David Mintel, Trent Berry, Blackjack, uh, Louise Aguiar, uh, 8-Bit Louise, that's at 8-Bit Louise, James Davis, at James Davis Makes, and the Nanobiologist. Uh, Today, we're brought to you by Amazon Pharmacy and DoorDash, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. We got six items on the rope report. A baker's and got it. Great job, Kev. You landed it, Gary. Mm. We've been waiting for this question for a long time, and it turns out there's now an expiration date. Will Anthem survive this week? We turn to Bloomberg, where Jason Schreier files this report. Electronic Arts Incorporated will hold a meeting this week to determine whether it will continue trying to create a new version of the failed online game Anthem, according to three people familiar with the matter. Anthem, a multiplayer game by the EA-owned developer BioWare, launched in February 2019 to poor reviews. In the following months, BioWare put together a small team to overhaul the game. Executive producer Christian Daly wrote three blog posts last year outlining some of the big changes planned. But in December, Daly left the Anthem team as part of a Bioware management shakeup, leaving the project's fate in question. This week, EA executives will review the latest version of Anthem Next and decide whether to expand the team or abandon the project, said the people, who asked not to be named discussing private information. The Anthem Next team includes about 30 people, Bioware said last year. Uh, People familiar with the project said it will need to expand to at least triple that in order to produce new content and continue attempting to overhaul the game. EA has not yet indicated whether it's willing to commit that kind of budget to revive the maligned game. A spokesperson for EA said the company doesn't comment on rumor and speculation. Anthem Next includes major changes to the game's core systems and user interface, the people said. It's not clear if or when these changes will be implemented in the version that's currently available to players. In the video game industry, second chances aren't unheard of. Games like No Man's Sky and Final Fantasy XIV turned around rocky launches with consistent updates and patches. CD Projekt SA's recently released role-playing game Cyberpunk 2077 is hoping to follow uh, a similar redemption story. Gary Witta, the most selfless individual I've ever had on Kind of Funny Games Daily. Quite right. The, the question to you is, does Anthem die this week? I mean, who knows? I, I don't have enough information to, I don't know what kind of state the game's in or what kind of, the mood, what kind of mood EA's executives are going to be in that day. I, I tell you what I'd like to see. I would like to see it um, uh, have some kind of second act, have some kind of resurrection, redemption narrative. As you mentioned, it's not unheard of. People like to point to uh, No Man's Sky. Uh, what was that? I can't remember which, which Final one Fantasy is, 14. Fun, Final Fantasy 14 also um, had a redemption uh, narrative. 
Uh, Cyberpunk is obviously hoping that they can find that same narrative. The media loves this. They love they love comeback stories. You know, we I, all, I do. You know, we we all we all want to support that, and we all want to believe that you know you can come back from even a terrible situation. It's just you know it's 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 life affirming. It's heartwarming. It's a positive story when people are able to to kind of you know resurrect something out of a catastrophic situation and it really was catastrophic if you remember you know i, I remember mm-hmm. reading jason Shry's original deep dive reporting on this and it really does seem like anthem was kind of fundamentally misconceived from the beginning no clear vision uh from the top you know people coming and going the game felt you know the game seemed like it was something like, are, are we flying around on jetpacks or not oh you know this what are we doing this week and it just seemed like they were changing it constantly and if you don't have like that clear consistent vision you're going to end up with what they ended up with Sure. When, when Anthem launched, which is kind of this muddled mess that kind of wasn't really one thing or the other. Definitely kind of, and this is the encouraging part, definitely like green shoots of of uh, things to be optimistic about, right? People really love the Iron Man, you know, kind of flying around stuff. Anthem that mechanic was, feels was great really to popular. Play. I enjoyed playing Anthem, and that's because I enjoyed the moment-to-moment gameplay. I hated the loads. I hated going back to the thing. I hated the weird end game after when I got there and not feeling like there was a reason to come back to it. But the actual moment-to-moment gameplay of Anthem, I did think it was fucking awesome. And, the, right. you know, as somebody who's put so much time into Avengers, when I'm playing as Iron Man, I'm like, hmm, I wish it played like Anthem played. Yeah, the issue, the issues for me were that the world building and the lore felt generic. The gameplay loop seemed very mm-hmm. generic. You know, the same old shit. Go get, whack ten of these fucking space critters, and I'll give you a slightly better space backpack than the one you had before. You know, it's and, and around and around we go doing the same shit over and over and over. Except the numbers that come off the bad guys when you hit them get bigger and bigger. But it's the same gameplay loop we've seen many many times before. So I don't know how fundamentally the game needs to be reconceived in order to um, you know, mitigate and address those very serious kind of foundational problems that the game has always had. I do, I do really admire and appreciate that they are trying again. And, they're like, and, and it's like, no, we can get this right. Just give us another try. Like I said, everybody wants to believe in second chances, not just in this business, but, you know, in life, in storytelling. It's just something we sure. want to believe in that, you know, no one's ever done until, you know, they're, you know, you're never done until you quit. And all credit to Bioware, they're refusing to quit. They're like, no, no, we can get this right. Give us, just give me 24 hours, chief. You know, I, I can crack this case. I love that. You want to give them the 24 hours. Um, what their plan is, how that's going to be received at EA, I honestly have no idea. And it's, you know, My- it's 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 a tough spot to be in. Greg, on a personal note, well, I can't go into any details, but I, I had a major project that I've been working on for about a year and that I was deeply, personally, creatively invested in. Woke up this morning, got an email, that project is dead. Sorry, nothing we can do about it. And it just came out of nowhere. And it, and it's And it's heartbreaking when that kind of stuff happens. So I really feel in a very real way from one creator to to another, how the Anthem developers must be feeling right now going into a meeting over which they have no control other than let's put forward the best project we can. Like that's all they can do, right? Is make the best progress, the best game that they can put that in front of, put put that in front of these EA uh, executives who we know, you know, are fickle at the best, you know, they kill, you know, they killed Amy Hennig's project, you know, which would have been a terrific game. You just never know what they're going to do. You, you realize all the time that, 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 that the creative people who work in things, whether it be Hollywood, whether it be video games, whether it be any kind of creative endeavor. We all do what we can to make the best work that we can. But at the end of the day, we're constantly reminded, as I was today, and as the as the Anthem developers are being reminded right now, that we're all just kind of these little chess pieces down on, you know, down in the mortal realm. And in the meantime, you've got, you know, the Olympian gods of Hollywood or the video game business up on Mount Olympus deciding, you know, just playing with us for their sport and deciding, you know, who lives and who dies and what project goes forward and what doesn't. So much of it is out of our hands. All you can do is do the best work that you can and fucking pray, I guess, yeah. that, 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 that things work out uh, your way. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for them. I would love to see, and uh, you know, we want, at the end of the day, we want more good games. Of and course. I, so I would love that. I'd love to live in a world where Anthem exists and is a great game than a world where Anthem doesn't exist at all. So I, I really hope they can pull it out. My, that was a stirring thing. And I appreciate where you're coming from being level headed. You're a coward. Cause I asked you point blank, are they going to survive? And you didn't want to make a choice. I, my thing here, I'm with you on everything you just said. Of course, I would have loved to have seen Anthem come back. I would have loved to see what Anthem next would be. Yada, yada, yada. If I had to put my chips on the table right now and make a, you know, a, a bet, I'm going to say that Anthem doesn't survive this week. And I think that's 
because of how quick the industry shifts, period, let alone how sh- quick it's shifted during COVID, let alone the sh- shifts you've seen at BioWare when they're sitting here talking about Christian Daly, right, who was the guy who was writing these posts and being like, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to fix it, and this is the thing, and then for him to leave, right, and then that to go. But the biggest piece of this puzzle is I don't see people talking about Anthem. Like, it, there's the joke, of course, anytime somebody wants to take a cheap shot at a game or a failure or talk about, like, is it going to be the next Fallout 76 or Anthem or whatever the hell it's going to be? That's when you see it come up. But I don't see people clamoring for Anthem. Even the people like me and Fran who enjoyed Anthem for what it was at the time, like, I haven't been like, man, I really miss Anthem. I want to go back to it. And it's for all the le- reasons you just listed that I've talked about that everybody knows that it's just a generic e-game that I don't think no matter what you put on the board there to sit there and be like, here's what we have. We're now uh, February 2019, right? So yeah, we're three or two years, two years uh, from launch of it. And you don't hear people clamoring for it. And I granted, I'm in the community, so this is a different thing. Like, as much as people want to shit on Avengers, there are plenty of people still like, man, Avengers would be great if this, that, and that happened. And granted, it's, I'm playing with my people who play with Avengers, so we have all these ideas. And I know even for Anthem, the core group of that, I followed the subreddit for a long time, so those conversations were happening. But as I play uh, Avengers, as I play Division, as I casually keep an eye on what's happening with Fallout 76, there are communities still around those games that are there for it. And Fallout 76, you know, is one that I think doesn't get talked about in the same way as a No Man's Sky or a Final Fantasy because both of those examples were quiet, quiet, quiet. Here's a huge drop. Here's what, how we're changing things. Here's what we're doing. Whereas Fallout 76 totally fucked it up out of the gate and was an insult to people who bought that game. And Bethesda sat there and added to that game over time and got it back to having NPCs and having all this stuff. And that's why you see the articles that are, oh man, Fallout 76 is pretty good right now. Or, oh man, like this is a cool thing they've added to Fallout 76. Like, the overall, once you, want, no matter what, uh, 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 Anthem, Avengers, Fallout 76 does in the future, they will always still be to the ma- the majority of gamers a punchline because they'll never come back and try again. They'll never be able to get out. You know, first impressions are everything, Gary. But I think even right now as you talk about this, EA has such an easy out of, listen, it's been two years. Your team is, your leadership has shifted. Yeah, this looks good, but there isn't, Look at Google Trends. Look at what we're seeing. There's just people. Look at the subreddit. There aren't people here who care enough about us for us to invest this in. Let alone the fact that you now are going to be riding high off this Mass Effect Le- Legendary Edition coming out. People super excited about Mass Effect again. Let alone the fact Bioware is working on this Dragon Age game that people are super excited about again. Like Bioware has moved on, and I feel for this team of thirty people that has sat there and been like, "How do we crack this nut? How do we make Anthem viable?" And might have a cool idea, but EA has to look at it and be like, "You're right." This is a cool idea, but we've invested this much money in it, and no matter what we do here with this game, I, I, and this is me talking, but I also think an EA executive, there's not going to be a way to put this out and have it not be fucking Anthem. <laughs> yeah, right. You'll get a lot of people in there, but you'll never have a huge hit. Yeah, I mean, I think you make some good points, Greg, but just, just, just to be clear, the reason why I hesitate to make a definitive decision is simply because I really don't feel like I have enough information to have an informed opinion sure. no, oh, i mean i don't that, either i'm talking on my ass i'm not at ea that, or well, that, i mean and, and 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 this and this is a broader problem right is that is the fucking you know a, a nuclear hot take industrial complex where everyone anytime there's a piece of breaking news everyone feels like they need everyone's got to have an opinion right whether it's informed or not and so everyone piles on and it creates all this fucking clutter all this noise and there's very very little actually informed knowledge in there it's just a bunch of people spouting off and running their mouths and we don't really and most of these people have no fucking idea what's going on i have no idea what's going on with anthem right now i have no idea what that current build looks like mm. i have no idea what kind of appetite ea has currently um, to continue making this game. Again, a, lo- a lot of that will depend on uh, the build that they're presented with, whatever presentation the Anthem developers make. Yes, there are some things you can point to that might give you an indicator. What kinds of decision, uh, what kind of decisions have EA historically made in the past? We know that they are more likely to cut their losses than to double down on something that's not going well, right? We yeah. know we and, and and we know that Anthem is in many ways damaged goods right the name is kind of synonymous with a shitty game right now and ea may make the decision you know what it's just a better use of everyone's time to put you on dragon age or the new mass effect or whatever other games that are by where they're developing that you know they haven't even announced yet that we don't know about there's just a better allocation of resources here than you know throwing good money after bad 
There are certain things that you can point to, but the main things that we don't know, what does the game actually look like right now? What is the presentation they're going to be making? How compelling, how convincing is that? And what, what kind of galaxy brain thinking does, does, does EA really uh, you know, uh, get involved in when they make these kind of decisions? We don't know any of those things. And those are the, and those are the things that are um, going to be most germane to the decision that comes out of this. So yeah, you can go, I think this or I think that. Again, everyone on the internet's doing that right now. I choose to do what I think has become the most fucking controversial thing these days and just say, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Coward, got it. Number two on the Roper Report, <laughs> CD Projekt has been hacked. They put up a, a post today that was a, tw a two-part tweet that was just images. One is their statement, one is the statement from the hackers. It, the C CD Projekt statement reads like this. Yesterday, we discovered that we have become a victim of a targeted cyber attack due to which some of our internal systems have been compromised. An unidentified actor gained unauthorized access to our internal network, collected certain data belonging to CD Projekt Capital Group, and left a ransom note, uh, the content of which we released to the public. Although some devices in our network have been encrypted, our backups remain intact. Uh, we have already secured our IT infrastructure and begun restoring the data. We will not give in to the demands nor negotiate with the actor, being aware that this may eventually lead to the release of the compromised data. We are taking necessary steps to mitigate the consequences of such a release, in particular by approaching any parties that may be affected due to the breach. We are still investigating the incident. However, at this time, we can confirm that, to, the best, to our best knowledge, the compromised systems did not contain any personal data of our players or users of our services. We have already approached the relevant authorities, including law enforcement and the president of the Personal Data Protection Office, as well as IT forensic specialists, and we will closely cooperate with them in order to fully investigate this incident. The ransom note is left in a little uh, a text file that says, read me, unlock. And it, it's just a screenshot that says, hello, CD Projekt Red. You have been epically pwned. We have dumped full copies of the source codes from your performance server for Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Witcher 3, Gwent, and the unreleased version of Witcher 3. Three exclamation marks. Uh, we have also dumped all of your documents relating to accounting, administration, legal, HR, investor relations, and more. Also, we have encrypted all of your servers, but we understand that you most likely recover from backups. If we will not come to an agreement, then our source codes will be sold or leaked online and your documents will be sent to our contacts in games, gaming journalism. Your public image will go down the shitter even more and people will see how shitty your company functions. Investors will lose trust in your company and the stock will, drop, will dive even lower. You have 48 hours to contact us. Gary, never negotiate with terrorists. Absolutely right. Especially since um, one of the things about these ransomware attacks, that apparently, because I was reading about this on Ars Technica this morning, yeah. the history of ransomware attacks, apparently in many cases, even after they pay the ransom, they still release the information or they yeah. don't, you know, give you control. Like they, 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 and this is so stupid. Like if you're going to be in the business, if you're going to be in the business of like hostage taking or ransom shit, or you're going to do that kind of shady shit, the same rule or rules of business apply you need to fucking keep up your end of the bargain sure. otherwise no one's going to want to do business with you why would cd project pay the ransom i mean obviously they shouldn't pay it anyway and i admire the stance that they're taking but probably at least part of what's factoring into their thinking is fuck these guys are probably going to release it anyway just for the lols because clearly they're fucking nut nutcases or evil whatever you want to call it these are fucking bad bad people who are doing this now you know it's a point now where I'm starting to feel quite bad for CD Projekt because fucking hell, it just goes from bad to worse. I mean, obviously, a lot of the problems have been of their own making, putting out a game that wasn't fit to be shipped. And, you know, they've been struggling to kind of um, deal with the consequences of that ever since. But they don't, no, nobody deserves this. Come on. And also, who the fuck says pwned? That's that, one thing. You know, I mean, the thing reads, and I'm not, hackers, the thing reads like a. Least, these hackers are at least 40 years old. Guys. I, Oh, see, I was gonna go the opposite. That they were young. They, it reads like really? such a. It reads like such a kid thing of like you've been epically pwned. Uh, okay, all right, it's whatever. Like, it's, like saying, it's like saying, "Chill out, Daddy. Oh, we've hacked your data." It's well, like, then there's this the whole thing of like it, you're, it'll go down this shit, or even more than people will see how shitty your company functions. Investors will they got hacked by the funds. <laughs> what, the fuck is going on? what is going on it reads like a kid to me or whatever right so i mean pwned? Like, who says pwned i literally haven't heard that in like a, uh, more than a decade 
Yeah, it's as usual the shitty thing of uh, shitty uh, people who are just angry. I assume about how the company functions and wants to go in there and screw around with it or whatever. And yeah, it's CD Projekt Red, don't these, negotiate these, it. These these guys are scumbags, and I, I don't know who these contacts in gaming journalism they think they have. No, no reputable games journalist is going to publish stuff that was stolen in a, in a hack. I mean, obviously they could just chuck it on a. It will get out there one way or another. They could they'll chuck it on a paste bin or you know they'll find a way to get it out there. You know, one of the Chan type boards or something will propagate it, and then it will become news. Um, but like no no reputable journalist is gonna is gonna take this shit and publish it. Come on. I mean, also like I don't. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm probably being short sighted, I guess. But like for the game code, who the fuck cares? I don't care about the source code for a video game. And then yeah, you're gonna get into how much the executives are making, how much the companies are, and I assume that's what it is. Like that's their business and how they want to figure all that shit out. And I don't need to be. That, I, pre- to, I, I hope they're able to, to to navigate it. And I and I, I'm sure they'll be undergoing like a big because this kind of shit shouldn't be shouldn't happen, right? Especially I, I sure, one hundred percent. I I get it when like. Um, you know, an unrelated, a business unrelated to tech gets hacked because maybe you don't have the, the the best, you know, tech security or whatever. But when you're in the business of software development, it's you should have really good security of your software. Of course, right? there's a whole bunch of how, indictments there. Even happen. See, my whole thing is like, I feel like it's such. This is the normal thing where I was like, oh, do I care what the executives make and what the company breaks down? No, but the employees do, and that's where this is yeah. the other side of the coin of this really is. Where I, as a consumer and as a game person, I'm like. All right, whatever. As somebody who, if I'm assuming, is a CD Projekt Red employee, and I, not, my inf- information is part of this compromised data, and it's been put out, and like, am I going to get doxxed? Am I going to have this thing? That's where you start extrapolating backwards, right? Where the sliver of people on the internet who care about this information are the ones who want to be fucking pissed off that uh, I'm, I'm so mad that you lied to me about Cyberpunk 2077, which of course isn't cool. I'm going to then send you death threats at home and stuff, which of course isn't cool. That's not the logical reaction to them taking 60 of your dollars for a game on playstation 4 that doesn't run that's not how this works you don't go yeah this i mean this obviously is just a sad extension of all this kind of stuff that we see where gay developers get death threats because they don't like that you know a developer change the fire rate on their favorite fucking you yeah, know yeah, call yeah. of duty weapon or something and again cd project fucked up and they're dealing and they're a they're legitimate consequence and, sh- and they should be held accountable yeah 100%. legal consequences economic economic consequences and, th- and those are all legitimate this is not a this is not a legitimate consequence of, of of anything that they've done. This is just a bunch of fuckers causing problems, just, you know, for whatever reason. Who knows what? Whether whether they feel like they're doing the, the sad thing about this is there are people out there who think that this is some form of justice against CD Projekt Red because they felt burned by the game and this is and this is their recourse. But there's a difference between justice and vengeance, and this is just fucking vengeance, and it's spiteful, and it's gross, and I, I, I who knows what, you, what can you do about it? Hopefully, they track these these people down and arrest them because they, you know, they should be in prison. Well, top men are on the case according to them, so they got an IT yeah, forensic artist out there. So you'll be all Good. doing sketches right now of what the hacker looks like. We'll figure out what happens. Uh, number three on the Roper Report. Guess what? Crash Bandicoot fans, Crash Bandicoot Four is coming to next gen slash current gen. You know what I mean? It's coming to PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X. Here's some marketing speak for you. He's made you spin, jump, and wump for 25 years. In this year, our beloved orange marsupial is celebrating in style to kick off his silver anniversary on March 12th. The true sequel to the classic Crash Bandicoot trilogy from the 90s and the first original entry in the Crash franchise in more than 10 years, Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time will launch on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X slash S, and Nintendo Switch. The game will also launch on PC via Battle.net later this year. Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time launches on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X slash S, and Nintendo Switch on March 12th. Developer Toys for Bob has been hard at work to bring Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time to new platforms. Fans of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X slash S are in for some incredible within the end period there. Very. You see what they did there? Like insane trilogy. They nailed it. Uh, visuals. Uh, when they see the game run in 4K at 60 frames per second. Additionally, players on either next gen platform will enjoy quicker loading times to dive into the Wumpa eating action and 3D audio that will immerse them in all new dimensions. What's more, players who purchase or already have Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One will be entitled to receive next gen upgrades at no cost, except in Japan, within the same console family, including the ability to transfer save data. So right there, Gary, I mean, there's more marketing speak and talking about the dual sense, but they crush what you care the most about. If you own this game, free upgrade to your platform that you already have it on. So if you want PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5, you're all set. Xbox One to Series X slash S, you're all set. Brilliant. Good move. 
You know, I think people, or I, when, you, you wince when you see Activision at work. You're like, what are they about to do? Okay, cool. They did that. That's fine. Uh, PlayStation yeah. 5 owners in particular will be in for an extra treat with DualSense wireless controllers bringing adaptive triggers to players' fingertips. Fans will now be able to feel the force of Neocortex's DNA-changing blaster and experience the grip as they grapple with Twana's hookshot. Additionally, PlayStation 5 activity card feature will give players a clear breakdown of their progress throughout each of the game's dimensions, providing guidance to achieve objectives and more. Uh, adding to the fun, switch the new. Uh, uh, here we go. Uh, it's a uh, PlayStation Five and Series uh, Xbox for sixty bucks. Switch is going to be forty bucks. Uh, pre-orders are starting today. The game's coming to Battle.net, as we said, with pre-orders available now for forty bucks. Uh, fans can expect more information on the PC edition later this year, along with other fun happenings in celebration of the franchise's twenty-fifth anniversary. Gary, did you play this already? Did you already do anything with Crash Bandicoot? It's about time. Nah, we've strayed into uh, I don't care territory a little bit here because sure. uh, I've never Cr- Crash has never really been my cup of tea either as a as a mascot as a character. I've always felt he's a little bit too poochy uh, for me. Um, and uh, <laughs> Poochie died on the way back to his yeah, home planet. Yeah, and, and the and the yeah, you know, can, like can we give him ten percent more attitude? You know, I can I can I can so so clearly visualize the marketing meeting in which Crash Bandicoot uh, was created. Extreme, um, yeah, extreme. Um, and, I, and, and I'm not really, that kind of game doesn't really appeal to me either. But, you know, again, it's not about me, Greg, thinking outside of the box and, yeah, and thinking you're about... you're selfless. Um, listen, uh, I'm, I'm glad, I, listen, there are a lot of people out there like Crash Bandicoot. This is good news uh, for all of them, you know, coming to all platforms, the cross, uh, you know, the cross-generational upgrade for free. That's something we want to see across that's the board. Great, yeah. It's nice to see more games uh, taking the lead there, especially from Activision, you know, the ultimate cash grab company. It's nice, nice to see them do something consumer-friendly uh, for once. And I would say as well also that uh, this is particularly good news for Xbox fans. As you know, if you listen to the uh, the Xcast, one of the things that Snowbike and Paris and I talk about regularly is how that is a big area where Microsoft has not so far taken great care of its customers in terms of giving bringing them the kind of family-friendly, cartoony mm-hmm. platform action adventure games that you know are replete on other platforms. Nintendo, obviously, that shit's their bread and butter. They got that on lock. Uh, PlayStation, you know, between Crash um, and Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Dax and all these other, you know, they've always had, you know, great, you know, cartoony, family-friendly platformers. And Xbox traditionally have as well. You know, they've got Banjo and Kazooie in the in the, in their pocket. They've got Conker and these other characters. For whatever reason, they've chosen not to, you know, to bring them into the latest generation as far as we know so far. And I feel like that's a big area that they're missing. My kid and my wife and I, we love playing uh, Sackboy on the PlayStation Five right now. We obviously love. Uh, playing all the Mario games. Super excited about Bowser's Fury coming up soon. Um, on the Xbox, though, there's just nothing really like that for my kid to play. There's a few smaller titles, you know, Super Lucky's Tale and stuff that, like see, that. See, that's but why like, I thought you there's, might there's, have done about time already because I thought maybe for your daughter. Because, you know, like, obviously the man babies like Tim who lived their entire life were obsessed with this. And I never liked to crash. And I played about time and I really dug it. I, I think I only did the first two worlds before I got distracted by a review. So, like, Right now, this is exciting to me. Where it's like, oh, okay, cool, and I can yeah. Just so pop maybe in you know, and- so maybe maybe I'll grab this when the when the next gen versions uh, do drop. Mostly because I, I I'll play it with my kid if she enjoys it. But it's not sure. It's not a go to game for me. I just think that in in general, this is kind of a side topic. But it's it's something we we go on about on the Xcast all the time. Microsoft has not done a great job of checking that box. You know, family friendly platform action adventure type games. Like where is Microsoft's you know Crash Bandicoot or Mario or Sonic type character or, or those kind of games. That's they're a little bit deficient there right now. And I'd like to see them do more. In the meantime, you know, next gen Crash Bandicoot coming to that platform will help, you know, fill the void for some people. Again, just not my it, it's hard for me to kind of get too excited because I just I have never really cared for that character. I didn't even like I didn't even like having having to play in Uncharted 4. Like this the, that small part. Well, yeah, because Crash you're... Bandicoot number one's a bad game. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, Tim. Like running at the camera, garbage. Like you can't see where you're gonna land. That's why yeah, this that's one fixes no all that stuff. That's like no you should good. Really, you should try this one, Gary. It is really good. And actually, now that I'm talking about it, I've been in this thing of like I'm playing the division, having a great time. But I have been like, what am I doing next? What do I want to do? I might download that today. Might get back to that because my save will carry over. Who cares? You know what I care about though? Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. You of course can go there to be part of the show, ask us questions, get the exclusive post show. But most importantly, for right now, get the show ad free. But guess what, Buster? You're not watching on Patreon.com/slash Kind of Funny Games. You're on Twitch or YouTube, so that or podcast. So you gotta listen to the ads. Here they come. 
This episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is sponsored by Amazon Pharmacy. Chances are you use Amazon, but have you used Amazon Pharmacy yet? That's right. Prescriptions delivered to your door by Amazon, just like the TP and Funko Pops you're probably already ordering. It saves you time and keeps you out of the waiting line at the pharmacy. It's easy. Have your doctor's office send your next prescription straight to Amazon Pharmacy. You can use your insurance. Amazon Pharmacy works with most insurance plans nationwide. Amazon Prime members get free two-day delivery and save on prescription medication when paying with without insurance. Tim needed some medication over the, oh, this is, uh, yeah, went over the holiday break that we just did. Tim needed medication. He used Amazon Pharmacy, and he says it was easy as hell. Amazon Prime members can save on prescription medication when not using insurance and get free two-day delivery. Learn more at amazon.com slash games rx. That's A-M-A-Z-O-N dot com slash games rx. Amazon.com slash games rx. Ladies and gentlemen, up next is DoorDash. Uh, dinner, check. Deodorant, check. Morning pick-me-up from Dunkin', check. Get everything you need whenever you need it with DoorDash. DoorDash. DoorDash connects you with restaurants you love right now and right to your door. And now you can get grocery essentials you need with DoorDash too. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app. Choose what you want, where you want it from, and what items you want safely left outside your door with the contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Australia, and now Canada, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code GAMES2021. For our Canadian listeners, use the code GAMESCA. That's 25% off, up to $10 value, and up to a $10 value, uh, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code GAMES2021 in the U.S. and GAMES CA in Canada. Don't forget that code GAMES2021 and GAMES CA for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. I use DoorDash far too much. Thank you for sponsoring. I like this DoorDash. Program. Yeah, I usually stay out of it when you do the ad reads, you know, because I try because most of the time I just want to like say stupid shit and I don't want to mess with you know how you guys pay your it's bills. It's either DoorDash or the 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 taco for masturbation. That's what you come with. Yeah, about. yeah, the ple- the pleasure sleeve, which I still think a Nick and Andy should do on uh, as a special KFAF. I, I told you I'd sponsor it. Um, but uh, yeah, DoorDash. We were using Grubhub, and then they discovered DoorDash, and it's just a better app. It's just mm. better, and we like yeah. and it has yeah, we like it a lot more. Yeah, DoorDash. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, I like DoorDash a lot. Uh, number four on the Roper Report, let's talk about Persona Strikers review roundup. When I was gathering this at 9 a.m., it sat at an 84 on Metacritic. Twinfinite gave it a 4.5 out of 5, where Keenan McCall says, Persona 5 Strikers is proof that change isn't always a bad thing. While it may not hold on to everything that made its forebear a phenomenon, the new elements it brings to the table more than make up for it and show that the series' future lies in more than just straightforward turn-based JRPGs. It's an experience fans will find more than enough to love about uh, and that will give them plenty of hope for the series' bright future. Over at Games Beat, Mike Minotti gave it a 4 out of 5 and writes, Now, Strikers isn't exactly on the same scope as a full-blown Persona game. The social art aspects aren't as robust. You aren't forging relationships with your characters or eating beef bowls to increase your personality traits. And it's not as long. Persona 5 may take you about 100 hours to beat. Strikers only took me a bit over 30 hours to complete. I'm not going to complain about that, though. That felt like a good length for an action role-playing game, and it makes sense that the experience would be a bit shorter without the calendar events that fill out a normal Persona game. Parentheses, you aren't studying for tests or picking up after-school jobs. But you're still collecting Personas and fusing them to make new ones. You're still rocking out to an amazing soundtrack, parentheses, which includes a nice collection of new songs and remixed tunes from Persona 5. And if you liked Persona 5, you're going to have a great time. I'm not sure I'm not sure if you would call Persona 5 Strikers a spin-off or a sequel. Honestly, it feels more like the latter. But if you want to call it a spin-off, it's the best one that the Persona series has offered yet. And then at IGN, and it was an 8.0 from Tom Marks who writes, Persona 5 Strikers main story is every bit a direct sequel to the Persona 5 that it's seen is every bit the direct sequel to Persona 5 that it seems, making this summer road trip with the Phantom Thieves essential for fans of the original and probably pretty confusing for anybody who hasn't played it. Its lack of Persona's signature social and calendar systems are the only places its spin-off status becomes a bit of a letdown. But even replacing turn-based combat with real-time action doesn't stop it from recapturing the feel of its predecessor overall. Its structure is far more close to, closer to the action... 
Its structure is far closer to action JRPGs like Kingdom Hearts than the Musou's Omega Force it's best known for. But the varied playstyles of each character and the story that pulls them along made the fairly simple act of hacking through shadows enjoyable to the very last surprise. Gary, I know you dug Persona 5. Did you ever beat it? No, and it's uh, it's a particular point of shame for me that I still need to go back and finish it. I got to the very last palace, and then so I can't remember what it was. Something happened in my life that caused me to kind of drift. You know, it, it, sometimes you know when you step away from a game, if you step away from it for too long, yeah. it can be kind of hard to go back. 100%. And that happened to me. Even though I was obsessed with Persona 5, I got so close to the end. I think I had about 90, 85, 90 hours in. I was really close to the end, and I never finished it. I did pick up the Royal recently because my plan is to go back and do it all over again play through it 100 percent it do it right i did spend a little bit of time with uh, strikers i played the first couple of hours of it um and i gotta say i really like it it's funny even though it's obviously a very different type of game yeah. um again more of a kind of a hack and slashy kind of game like fighting you know kind of big mobs of enemies i st- i that didn't matter to me and and the fact that it, what's interesting is the fact that persona 5 was a jrpg which is the kind of you know, turn-based party combat it's not really my cup of tea either i still loved the game and i love strikers as well because the thing that is common between the two of them is the aesthetic and the world and the characters and the storytelling and that's what i loved about persona 5 i just loved spending time in that world the, the the graphic style the music the characters the storytelling just hanging out at the coffee shop you know it's just hanging out at leblanc was just like i just love being there and so this is a and and, and it does as, as as you rightly said it picks up immediately after the end of uh persona 5 all the, the fan of these oh it's so good you know so good to be back together again after all those adventures we just had in that last game what's next and they're all kind of like back together and it's it's just nice to be back in the company of you know Oh, yeah. these characters become like your friends right and it's just nice to spend time with them again 100 percent, and i get that and i i that's why i think people are going to be stoked about it and you're going to see people jump into it because yeah people love persona 5 and that cast and those characters and want to get in their taste of it so yeah uh, it's one of those for me where it's like yeah muso has never been my thing so i don't it doesn't speak to me and i never finished persona 5 either so i'm like i don't see the need to jump into it but i know for the people who want that it's there for them uh, number five on the Roper Report, Ubisoft did an earnings call today. Daniel Amat on Twitter had a whole bunch of breakdowns that were happening as I was building this. So th- this is the Daniel's call, take from the call, and then I have a little bit of Benji sales to the very bottom. But Assassin's Creed Valhalla is the biggest AC game launch in history. It is the second best-selling game on next-gen consoles. Wow, that probably is cool, and it will be addressed in some way in terms of, hey, how does Valhalla compare to the rest in Assassin's Creed in review coming tomorrow from Barrett Courtney on uh, YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Uh, back to what they're talking about here on the call though ac valhalla's daily average users are up two times compared to odyssey in the same time frame uh, valhalla it was the biggest ubisoft launch in terms of digital slash add-on spend gary uh we've talked a lot about assassin's creed on this but mainly about your wife and my obsession with odyssey where does she place valhalla against odyssey i ask her that um occasionally and She's always said that she likes Odyssey more. I think Odyssey is still yeah, her favorite Assassin's Creed game of the one that she played. Yeah, it is. But she has yeah, said recently is. that she feels like Valhalla's been kind of creeping up on it. Like, it's, it's, it's up there for sure. Um, she's still finding some wacky bugs. She played last night and found some really wacky bug where she had to revert to an earlier save to kind of mm-hmm. break out of the, the bug. And so, you know, the, the Assassin's Creed games famously have always been a bit bug-ridden. They're still, you know, even after all these updates, my wife, is still finding a lot of bugs, but she's got, you know, I don't know how many hours in at this point. I think she had like three, 400 hours in uh, Odyssey by the time she she moved on. And she's she's definitely going to, I imagine, is going to have something similar to that by the end of Valhalla, you know, once you factor in, because we got the season pass version with all the DLC. She's going to play all of that shit. She loves it. I, I speaking purely as someone who watches her play i think i like valhalla a little bit better i like the characters crazy, around crazy. Crazy. I, I like I, I like the characters roughly around the same uh they're both really cool characters uh i like the combat better in Valhalla. the combat in valhalla is just combat immediate. is really good in valhalla like yeah, chop yeah. like you really get to like chop people up and decapitations and all kinds of like yeah it just feels like viking combat you know like really brutal and violent that it does it's it's not graceful or elegant it's just a fucking street fight just like beating people to a bloody pulp and you've got to love that I, I enjoyed the back and forth, right? Like, I really enjoyed Valhalla. I had to stop to move on to other reviews in December. I put, like, 30, 35 hours into it. And I enjoy I right there with you with the combat. I think the world's beautiful. I didn't connect to Eivor the same way I did to Cassandra, which really kept me around. But when you're sitting here, you're talking about two great games. So whichever one you like is fine. However, in the chat, uh, Jay Yawalsh 97 says, Odyssey was real bad. And for that, you are timed out. So 
you can think about it. You got 600 seconds of a timeout right there to think about what you said. Because we're not going to come in fight. here and insult Odyssey. Don't all right? You, you want to say Valhalla's better? You want to say Origins is better? That's fine. You're going to come in here and say wrong, Odyssey's really fine. bad? Huh? I said it's wrong, Kevin? but it's you know, it's fine. You can say that. It, it's not wrong. Sure, right. yeah. You're, we don't agree with your opinion that you know what that uh, uh Assassin's Creed Odyssey uh, Cassandra they're not the best well that's fine we it's you're fine to have a wrong opinion I don't mind that but when you come in here and lie to our faces and try to say to this chat that it's a bad game time out you're timed out everybody throw up your timeout chats we don't have time for this right now okay uh back to Daniel's rundown of everything that Ubisoft was talking about though Rainbow Six Siege has surpassed 70 million players adding 15 million players over the past 12 months now six years old with a stable MAU and robust acquisition uh the negative impact of east their negative impact of esports event cancelization offset by next gen version plus battle pass plus ongoing updates uh, back to more stuff outside of that. Ubisoft says that the switch to RPG focus on Assassin's Creed led to steep rise in player engagement for Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, breaking a record for engagement. Obviously, we see that as more and more people, I think, are so into the characters they're building. Uh, Ubisoft says it is ramping up production on free-to-play games, will reveal some of those games this year, aim to reach more players on more platforms across its franchises slash new IP, and then it is working with partner Mo we're working on a partner mobile title with Tencent. Then, you, this is where Daniel stopped, and I think I was getting ready to come on the show, so I stopped here. Uh, he says, Ubisoft says that it will build a new Star Wars game. It, I'm sorry. Ubisoft says it will build its new Star Wars game on the Snowdrop engine. Of course, this has been a big conversation in my circles right now, Gary, because I'm really obsessed with the division, with the next-gen stuff. I'm playing with Fran. I'm playing with Scott Lowe. Uh, Kevin refuses to come play with us, even though he said he would. Uh, I see Andrea out there. You see Khalif out there. Everybody's back. We're all out there playing. <laughs> Uh, there was this conversation though with Massive going to Star Wars uh, this season uh, of Division content. Start, you know, only a couple of things left as we get into February slash March. Like, is this the final hurrah? Are they going to kind of sunset the Division, not do anything with it, and move to Star Wars? Benji Sales had this from the same call. Uh, his he's also you know doing shorthand bullet points here. Confirms Ubisoft Massive will continue to make new Division content in both 2021 and 2022, despite working on their new Star Wars game. Says Massive is a large studio collaborating with other teams and is able to work on both simultaneously. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's no better time to get into the Division with us right now. Kevin. Kevin, let's get you out of – you're back in New York. Let's just get you out of it. Let's pull you out of it. Let's get you into D.C. Let's it's get you – It's been a really stuff. busy couple of days, if I'm being honest. I haven't played anything. I know. You're building that bummer. tortoise a new home. I have to I'm going to I'm gonna play. So I was – one of the things I was excited to see when I got on that – PlayStation? Um, uh, yeah, on PlayStation. You can play You can play with me, Kevin. I'll be your buddy. I'll back you up. You say the word. I'll, You'll I'll be on play my fire team. Uh, so, cause I got the, I got the, so as you know, I originally, and I'll, and I'll admit this, Greg, I fucked up. And again, this is, this is, this is not my problem. I long for the day, the sunlit uplands, the days when it doesn't matter which console I have. I just get to play with all of my friends. When, when the, when the dream of cross play is a reality, just, it's just, it's just the default that yeah. day is coming. Until then. Honestly, I think if, and I want to full stop you, because remember, I always give you credit, is you've been banging the crossplay drum on Kind of Funny longer than anybody else. And I remember when we originally had these conversations, I think around the Division 2, you were like, it's going to happen. I was like, you're crazy. It'll never happen. And then here we are in 2021, where I do believe that has to be something they're working on right now. One of the one not of their just, next not just big for the, not just for the Division, but I'm saying like across the board, no, give no, it no, a few it's... more years and it will be the default. In 2021, if you release a game and it's not crossplay, I think people are going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why is why would I why, why would I do this? Why would I break it up? Yeah, yeah. So it, it's only a matter of time whether or not there'll even be another division game. I don't know. You know, it's interesting at this point. Ubisoft is obviously going to massively uh, pull a lot of resources away from like the division people onto this new Star Wars game. I, I don't know if there's going to be a Division Three. I hope there will be. I honestly have no doubt, no idea if there will be or how much they're going to continue to support the Division Two going forward. I would love to see that crossplay patch. I made a decision when the Division 2 came out. I love the first Division, played it on the Xbox. When Division 2 came out, I, I chose to also get it on the Xbox, mainly because I liked the controller better and because I had some friends I wanted to play with, but it ended up being the wrong decision. Again, I shouldn't have to make the fucking decision, but it was the wrong decision because all of the kind of funny best friends, all of the people that I, that I really wanted to play with, or at least most of them, were on the PlayStation side. And so I got my nose pressed up against the glass here, like watching you guys over there on PlayStation have, have fun without me and it bummed me out. So when the new version came out with Warlords in New York, I got it on PlayStation, as you know, with the Warlords um, expansion pack. And what I particularly appreciate about it when I first booted it up is if you want, you can start at level one and play mm -hmm. the whole campaign, 
or you can choose to go straight into the DLC and it will boost your character to level 30 and you'll skip the main campaign. Having already played and finished the main campaign on Xbox, I'm just going to jump straight to level 30, get into the DLC, and I'll be able to roll with you guys. I'm excited about it. When do you want to do it? You know what I mean? Well, I just so what I what I what I just need to do Thursday. is, is do Thursday. a little Let's bit of it Thursday. Play some of the play some of the single player Warlords God, campaign. Get you know, again, I haven't played for a while. I need to get the muscle memory back. I gotta to adapt to the new controller. Sure. I gotta play on the stupid fucking dual sense now, but Here, whatever, if I'll I can, deal with it. If I can stop you, tomorrow is my streaming day. Me and Snowbike Mike are playing. You should get in. You should come play with us. We'll let me see if I, let me see if I can play some tonight to kind of because I don't want to jump in like you know, going going, oh, what does this button do? Like let me let me try and get my feet under me first. Greg. And I've also I just put tonight, up a tweet. I, I put up a tweet that I need everybody's help with. Go to twitter.com slash game over Greggy. We're starting the hashtag right now. Uh put crossplay in division two. And I said, let Gary, Witta, and I be friends. Stop the insanity and then use the gift of us holding hands. So it's all good. The division games, are the, again, it's already getting to the point now where the games that don't have cross-play used to be when a game has cross-play, that set it apart from the others. Right? Oh, this game actually yeah. has cross-play. Most games don't have that. The tide is turning now where the opposite is true. If you don't have cross-play, you stand out because it's becoming more and more the norm. Yeah. I'm glad oh, to yeah, see yeah. that happening. Yeah, hundred percent. You were ahead of the curve, and I love it, Gary. Uh, so figure out, play some tonight. Play with us tomorrow. Thank you, Lucy, for the refill on coffee. Uh, we have a number six here that is quick hits, which were all, I originally titled "Things You Don't Care About But You Should Know About" kind of things. But since we're already late, I'll give you really quick ones, right, Gary? Uh, Gary, do that uh, Lucy, without. Did she just do that without you even having to ask? Yeah, we're we're a house that cares for each other. That's amazing. Uh, EA has bought Glue Mobile for $2.1 billion. <laughs> That's Eddie over at GameSpot reporting on that. It's everywhere, obviously. Uh, they're going to immediately, this is one of my favorite things. For EA, this deal is all about making more money for microtransactions, which is a major point of focus for the company as it builds its live service portfolio. So there you go. Uh, 10 million players have played Minecraft Dungeons. That's just a stat for you, but what it means is you're going to get some free DLC on February 24th as part of a free update for the game and a celebration. It, you're getting, uh, what are you... Oh, here it is. Uh, to celebrate this, you're getting, releasing a cape and pet for our players. So February 24th, you can log in and get that. Uh, Sony has patented a back button for the uh, add-on for the controller on the DualSense. Literally the same back button they did for DualShock 4. Not literally the same, but you understand. The same thing where you plug it in and you can use it and you can assign it and you can do whatever you want to it. And then Jamie Lee Curtis has joined the Borderlands movie cast. She will be playing Tannis. And I think that is some awesome casting. And I don't know. I mean, Kevin Hart's in the same thing. Kate Blanchett. Pl Bl did I say Planchette? Blanchett. Uh, you know, video game movies, obviously, not the best reputation, but I'm excited to see what that actually looks like, Gary. Yeah, I, I mean, who knows? Um, it's a very, very, very um, stylistically differentiated game, right? We, we know what can we, we, it's, you know, in terms of the broad comedy, we know what that is. In terms of the aesthetic style, it's, you know, got that very kind of graphic novel, comic book, almost kind of cel shaded kind of look it's going to be really interesting to see how that translates uh to a live action movie they've got good, they've got good people working on it i uh eli roth i'm, yeah. I'm optimistic yeah craig mazin mazin yeah uh All good people i'm excited to see how it turns out gary but that's so far away if i wanted something more immediate say what came to the mom and grab shops where would i go where sorry, would i go greg, gary? I was <laughs> sorry greg i was miles away Again. there you go the sequel um the official list of up and coming software on each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. yeah. Out today, uh, you can, what is this here? There's Stranger Things, there's a Stranger Things chapter available for Dead by Daylight. Uh, the Wild Eight is on Xbox One. Hero U, Rogue to Redemption is on Switch. Hexagon Defense is on Switch. My Universe Pet Clinic, Cats and Dogs is on Switch. One Shell Straight to Hell is on PC. Uh, Red Dead Online's got a whole bunch of different stuff you can jump in and get. Uh, the fourth season of Journey starts now in Gwent. And then PUBG Update 10.3 is now live on PC. New dates for you. Doors of Insanity comes to Steam Early Access on February 10th. Get a Grip Chip comes in November Switch on March 25th. Trashed is coming to Steam on February 15th. And then in celebration of Black History Month, Rocket League will be featuring new in-game songs by black creators uh, Francis uh, Durrell and uh, Vin Data. Uh, these Monster Cat artist songs will be featured as Rocket League menu music and will be available to claim as player anthems for free in the item shop on February 23rd. Gary. 
We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, and podcast services around the globe. Uh, today, there's one. It's on me, and I'm sorry. Kebabs writes in and says it's Tana for this Crash Bandicoot character that I, I flubbed the name on. Tana, like paw, Pawna, but Tana. You dorks. You know what I mean? Preach to Tim Gettys. Am I right, Kevin? I'm yep. not a Borderlands expert. I did enjoy playing um, Borderlands 3. I, played, no, I was talking I, about I, Crash. I it was good. Crash. It was Crash. It was Crash oh. Bandicoot. Oh, okay. I screwed it up. I thought you were about the Cape Blanchett thing. No, no, I screwed up. Yeah, well, I, I corrected myself on that. There's no reason. Tana right. from, it was like a character. Well, for Crash the record, Bandicoot. I enjoyed Borderlands 3, Greg, whether you want to yeah. hear that or not. I do want to hear that. I wish we were playing that together. Did you play that on Xbox 2? Uh, no, I played that on PlayStation 4. Why do we never roll? What are we doing? You can upgrade the PlayStation I played 5 for with free my, right uh, I played with my friend uh, Tina from IGN. She uh, she rolled with me. Oh, yeah, good thing it's only a two-player game. I'm glad I never got an invite. Uh, the rest of the hosts for this week look like this. Tomorrow, it'll be Blessing in Imran. Thursday, it'll be me and M.H. Williams. And then Friday, it is Imran Khan's final games daily as a regular part-timer. Uh, he'll be on with me. And you right, he's leaving, isn't he? Him. Yeah, exactly. Come boom in the chat. Get, get out. And here's the thing. You see it, Gary. You're on our Slack's channel. This guy, he is just begging for codes before he gets out of I gotta here. I'm like, say, let's I gotta say, do it. I, I let's saw, I, get you your, codes. Your, your response to him the other day, I, I, I stood up at my desk and applauded. It was remarkable. It was one of the best Slack owns I've ever seen. Well done. Get out of here, Imran. It was very I mean? good. Very if you're good. watching live right now on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, uh, Nick, Andy, and Mike are going to be here to stream some games for you and have some fun. Uh, if you want to follow us at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, Gary and I got a post show to do. Remember, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday on a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, come over, watch the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, be a part of the show, get it ad-free, have a good time. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Play Yakuza like a dragon. <laughs>